Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith. I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to speak about Roland and the return of the Groove Box. And the Groove Box itself kind of has a place in my heart because I really started buying synths in the 90s. And Roland was really in a Groove Box trend back in that era. They had the 303, the 505, the monstrous MC909, and even some other groove boxes that were a little bit more obscure and less used, like the D2 with that strange orange chaos paddish type pad they had going on. They had a few other smaller synths that kind of followed the groove box model, but weren't full fledged groove boxes. And with the ushering in of the new MC 101 and the 707, they're kind of throwing back to that legacy of the groove box and incorporating things that you just couldn't really do with the things in the past and obviously pushing the Groovebox technology forward. Now, before I go into this, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. You could be watching a lot of synthesizers, a lot of content creators talking about synthesizers. The fact that you're taking the time to watch this content means a lot to me and I just need to take the time to say thank you. Back in the day, I grew up on an MC-303 and a Virus A. That was my first real setup that connected with me, that I st stuck with for a while, that I really started to learn. I really didn't know anything once I got that setup together. I knew I liked it. I knew I liked what I could do, but I didn't know anything about music at all. If I could actually share the stuff I was creating back then, you know, like almost 20 years ago now, it would be really crazy, but the internet was just not at the level it was today. But the groove box really just holds a place in my heart for that sense because it's what I learned on. I learned on the MC-303 and I learned on the MC-505 and I touched a little bit of the 909 even though I never really owned it. But they were very much my catalyst in how I learned how to sequence, how I learned how to trigger MIDI out into other gear. I never really used the internal synth sounds of my 303. I bought the 303 to be my drum machine and send the parts out to my virus because you know the virus has multiple parts could handle all the multi parts sent out from 303 and the sequencer in the 303 for the time that was actually a really good budget setup to be sending your external parts out to your virus and having your just your drums from the 303 it was a nice little budget sequencer and i upgraded to the 505 eventually just to get you know some more drums and then i even eventually upgraded to a virus b so really the virus groove box combo honestly took up a very large portion of my growth the beginning of my electronic music period and during that era there was actually a lot more people doing groove box style stuff than roland you had yamaha that had their really killer groove box and then later on korg started experimenting with their er's and the ea lines which eventually became the electrives so that era was just really hot with the groove box feel and then it just all kind of faded out. So it's really interesting to see Roland kind of going back to their roots in that sense with the groove box. A lot of people have said it's overpriced. Now I am one person who does believe Roland charges for their name. You know, there's some companies who you pay for their name because you know, Apple is one a great example. And there's a lot of other companies that you're gonna pay for their name. And I believe Roland charges for their name. If you want to deal with Roland products, you're going to have to pay a little bit more for their legacy. But they've been around the block. They've been in the game for a while. They have, again, the legacy to back it up. And if you want their name, you're going to have to pay a little bit of premium to get it. If not, you can always wait for the secondary market to save some money off that initial price tag and save off paying for the Roland name. With saying all that, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think that Roland should be shamed for charging for their name. In a sense, they deserve it, and it's up to them to choose. And it's up to us to choose to pay for it or not. We have options. We have places to go. That's what consumerism is. But one thing I really got to say, it's really too early for most of us to claim what the price tag should be on that thing because we just haven't touched it. It hasn't been absorbed in our setup. And it's really up to the individual user to how valuable any instrument is to that person. Now, when it comes to the specs and all that, I mean, there's plenty of videos talking about specs. This is coming more from the heart and like groove boxes and why I'm happy to see groove boxes come back into the game. 
Whether or not I'm going to get one, I can't say 100% for sure, guys. If I did, it would probably be in the used market. I don't think I'd pay the brand new price for it, but I definitely could see myself if I had the extra money and I had a chance to get it either um, on a discount or used. You never know. It could be something I could swing for in the future just be purely because I do love groove boxes. I really do. That is one reason why I've really vibed with the core gadget because core gadget really does feel like kind of an evolved groove box. So what do you guys think about the 101 and the 707? Do you think it's cool that Roland is bringing back the groove box? Love to know your opinion. Until next time, stay positive, stay creative, support each other and peace.